The heartache of flooding has touched tens of thousands of Louisiana families. Until now, homeowners with houses built on slabs had only two choices, sell at a low price or continue to fight the inevitable floods. But now these homeowners have a third choice. They can have their homes raised above flood level, slab and all. Five homeowners in Denham Springs did just that. They were part of a project that brought a new house raising technique to Louisiana. This new technique, which raises the slab built home completely intact, is commonly practiced in Florida and Michigan. Each of the five homes that was raised in the project had been flooded three times and was classified as a repetitive lost property by the National Flood Insurance Program. The homes ranged from 1,600 to 4,000 square feet under the roof and were built with a variety of construction materials. Several had undergone extensive remodeling with the addition of rooms and fireplaces. The elevation process begins by digging under the structure while supporting the slab at its original elevation. Because a tremendous amount of dirt must be handled, the design and cost of the elevation project will depend on soil conditions and weather. Working in the dry season is highly recommended, especially in the Louisiana floodplains where the soil has a high clay content. When the excavation is complete, the temporary support system is replaced by steel beams in a grid system. These beams will provide support during the lift to keep the structure from bending and twisting. The thicker parts of the slab rest directly on the steel. Blocks are used to support the slab where it is thinner, and shims and wedges make up for irregularities. Once the structure is stabilized, hydraulic lifting jacks are placed under the steel. The base of the jack is set on cribbing, Cribbing is a framework of oak timbers commonly used by house movers. For this particular house elevation technique, the timbers and crib bases must be carefully sized and stacked. The number of jacks, placement of jacks, and the size of the crib bases needed to support the structure during the lift are determined by the contractor. The contractor will draw an experience taking into consideration the weight of the house and the soil's bearing capacity. Extra support is required under load-bearing walls and fireplaces. Though it takes anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks to prepare the home, the elevation itself can be accomplished in one day. The process involves a series of lifts. The house is lifted about 14 inches at a time. After each lift, cribbing is added, and the jacks are reset for another lift. This process continues until the structure is raised to the desired height and leveled. The house gets a final leveling and then stays on the cribbing and steel while a new foundation is constructed. First, special fill dirt is used to bring the ground under the house back up to the level of the surrounding yard. Then a heavily reinforced slab is formed and poured. Once the foundation has cured, concrete block chain walls and columns are built and joined to the old slab. After the new foundation and supports are in place, the steel beams are removed and the elevation contractor's work is essentially finished. The house is now on a firm foundation and is no longer considered to be at risk of flooding. Once your home is at this point, you can obtain a flood insurance premium reduction and you can cancel any special insurance you may have purchased to cover the house while it was on a temporary foundation. 
There's still a lot of work left to do, building decks and porches, reconnecting utilities, finishing the exterior wall, restoring the driveway, and landscaping. But these are primarily cosmetic changes, a minor concern compared with the anxiety you experienced when heavy rains threatened your home. Now rising water will be a mere inconvenience, not a tragedy. Elevating a home can be done for about half the cost of rebuilding. Though it is complex and somewhat costly, elevation is the most reliable method of preventing future flood damage. Unlike partial levees and wraps, elevation protects your home from floods even when you're not at home. And for flood levels exceeding three feet, it is the only viable method short of demolition or relocation. If you're considering elevation, you should visit your local building official. All development in floodplains, even remodeling, is governed by local flood damage prevention ordinances. The building official may be able to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of several elevation methods. He also should be able to tell you if you qualify for local, state, or federal financial assistance to help defray the cost of your floodproofing project. If you decide to proceed with elevation, you will need to hire a private engineer to design your foundation and act as your inspector. The engineer will provide structural information about your building and your property to your elevation contractor. There are a lot of decisions to make before you start making blueprints. For instance, you have to decide how high to raise the house, whether you will need an elevator or handicap access ramp, and if you want open areas to be used for boat or car storage. Planning and waiting for an elevation project to be completed can be tedious, but once your home has been elevated, you may find you're able to enjoy the sound of a spring rain, and it'll put you to sleep instead of keeping you awake. We moved to this nice, high and dry lot back in 67. And we thought, gee, we'd talk to all the old timers who'd lived here forever and it didn't flood. And uh, so 77, of course, we had our first flood, but we flooded in 77, 83, and 90. And uh, right now, when they came to us and said, would you be interested in getting this house raised? We said, oh, would we? And I think maybe it's a trauma in a way to think about not knowing exactly what you're getting into, but I don't believe anything at our age right now, it would be worse than having another flood because you really do go through a lot of trauma. In 77, we had 27 inches. In 83, we had 33 and a half in the house. And in uh, 90, we had 20 inches. So uh, the 83 was the, the worst flood. The first plans we had for raising the house was to raise it seven feet six inches high and we would park underneath the house and have uh, more or less a little garage under there and then uh, raise it and we asked uh, the gentleman who were going to raise it if we could move it back because when we bought this uh, land we just had 150 foot depth and now we have 300. He said as long as we get it up you can go anywhere you want to go. So we decided that if it was feasible, we'd go back 40 feet, and he said, oh yes, that would be no problem at all. So we planned to raise it and then move it back uh, 40 feet, which will be much better because we won't be right on the road now. With it up, it would be even worse than it is now. We flooded three times since 1977. We have right at 32 inches of water inside the house. We've also had two severe flood threats that we actually had to move out of the house, which means we take everything, doors, cabinets, everything you own out. One thing I think that is a problem, if you can imagine living in a place for 30 years and taking everything you own out in a matter of 12 hours, it does get to be quite a job. We want to elevate to get away from this problem because also when you flood, you're talking a good six to nine months out of your life. 
in putting the house back together because you have to let it dry out thoroughly before putting it back if you do it properly, and that takes time as well. Our, my required elevation would be six and a half feet, so we've decided to go eight feet to permit parking underneath. Of course, we will not be able to use the underneath for any living area or anything of that sort. This is my home. It was a very lovely home until it flooded three times. When we purchased this home, we had no earthly idea that we would ever flood since the river is a good distance away. My home floods at 18 inches, which is about up to your light sockets on the inside. We have a good while to prepare. It takes about two days before the water actually gets here. But in the meantime, you are rushing around trying to get your furniture together, your clothes together. Relatives are calling you trying to give you help. And it's just a mental and physical hassle. I never dreamed I would be here in this posi position. Once it has flooded, it is such a mess. It is unreal. It is just mind boggling. And I'm to the point right now of I just can't take it anymore. We could probably put this house up for sale and move, but Lord forbid, I wouldn't want to give this house to anyone else to be, put them in that situation. And I don't think anybody would want to put their own self in that situation. And besides, if I moved, my husband is happy here on this street. I'm happy on this street and we love all our neighbors dearly. So we just don't want to move. So the only way we can see that would help us is to raise this house up, slab and all. The front of my house will have pillars every four feet. It will have lattice work under, uh, in between each pillar. It will be, like I said, 48 inches from the ground. It will have a little deck with a banister porch and a little walkway and a brand new driveway and a brand new yard. And it will look very cute when we get finished. And we won't have to worry about flooding anymore and we won't have to worry about every time it rains, are we going to flood? This building has flooded three times. Flooded in 77, 83, and 90. And in uh, 91, it was threatened. There was water up to the curb here. The uh, cost as far as elevating the, the insurance and money out of pocket, it's been close to about $90,000 spent on this building. There's an office and an apartment attached. The, uh, when, it, when the water starts coming, you have to come in and haul all the office equipment out. Then you have to go and help the people who are renting because they've never gone through a flood before and they don't think this is going to happen. And you start helping them. So you, you spend uh, oh, probably two days getting ready for a flood. Flood leaves, you've got mud 30 inches high in the office. So you go in there with power sprayers and all your friends. We somehow keep losing friends. <laughs> but at any rate, the friends that are left, they come in and you power spray everything. Then your carpenters come in and they cut the wall halfway up. And then it, oh, it only takes about three months and you're back in business again. The unique part about this place is we're going to have to build up ramps. And what we think we're going to do is start here, go in that direction with a ramp, turn and come back so that you'll have your, your gradual grade and then steps will go up. I found out one thing, steps are only going to be four inches because those are nice, easy steps to deal with. I tell you, it's a, it's a terrible feeling when you climb through your window and you see all your furniture and everything that you own is going underwater. You know, it's, it's a, unless you've been through it, you can't, you can't imagine. They asked us if, if we would like to have our house raised and we had, you know, looked into the possibility of it. If not, we would have had to build a little shanty on the back side up in the air at least for a place to put our stuff when it floods and a place to go to but i tell you flooding is it's really a wear and tear on you physically not only you know but mentally too but all that lifting and all and then your children get grown up and they gone off and you can't depend on them anymore to help you out we're going to have uh, decking around the side and, and on the back and they're lifting the, um, the present carport and we'll have uh, 
a uh, carport under there now where we we'll, and we'll have railings up there where the carport used where it's going to go up in eight feet and we'll have railings and there'll be a porch and we'll cook out and all that good stuff up there I love it it's it's real comfortable we outside people in in the decking we send out, uh, sit outside in the afternoon and my neighbors come over and we we just as a as a group we sit on the on the decking and it's it's real nice